Hello everyone, myself Muskan Thakur, I am MEC student. Today, we will discuss about the input and output characteristics of bipolar junction transistor that is PGT. This is an NPN transistor with a common base configuration. Here, base is common between the input circuit and the output circuit. Here, operation is done in active mode and we know that the active mode is a mode in which transistor is used as an amplifier. To connect a transistor in active mode, we have to connect its emitter junction in forward biased. On the other hand, the collector junction should be kept reversed biased. For input circuit to be kept in forward biased condition, its N type is connected to negative side of the battery and P type is connected to positive side of the battery. And for output circuit to be kept in reversed bias condition, its N type is connected to positive side of the battery and P type is connected to negative side of the battery for the input and output parameters input parameters input parameters are those parameters which are related to the input circuit and output parameters are those parameters which are related to the output circuit in input circuit we have ie and vbe as the input current and the input voltage and in output circuit we have ic and vcb as the output current and output voltage so input parameters are ie and vbe and output parameters are ic and vcb now for the input characteristic curve as we know that a transistor can be considered as two diodes connected back to back like this Diode D1 can be considered as the emitter base junction and diode D2 can be considered as the collector base junction. So we are connecting the input circuit in a forward bias so the input characteristic curve of BJT can be considered as the characteristic curve of forward bias diode. Once again have a look on the input circuit of the BJT. Here IE is an input current and VBE is an input voltage. So on applying the Kirchhoff's law in this input circuit, we get an equation in which VBE equals to VEE minus IERE in which VBE is a potential difference between emitter and base, VEE is a battery voltage in the input circuit, IE is an emitter current and RE is input resistance. Here VEE is a battery voltage, it has a constant value and similarly RE also has a constant value so only VBE and IE changes. Now the input characteristic curve gives us the information about how IE changes with respect to VBE. It is a graphical representation of relation between VBE and IE and this is also known as the input characteristic curve. In this graph, the input voltage VBE is taken in x-axis and it is measured in volts and input current IE is taken in y-axis and which is measured in milliampere. Since voltage is the independent term, so it is taken in x-axis and current is dependent term, so it is taken in y-axis. You can observe that when VBE equals to 0, IE is also 0 and as we increase VBE, there, there is no change in IE and with us on the certain point we observe that there is change in emitter current exponentially as we increase the voltage. This point shows the barrier potential and here barrier potential is 0.7 volts as we are considering the silicon BJT. For obtaining the input characteristic curve we keep the output voltage constant. And for the different values of output voltages, we get many similar curves like this. Now we have to study the effect on characteristic curve when we increase or decrease the output voltages. So for the change in curve on changing the output voltage, we can understand this by early effect. Early effect is the effect also known as base width modulation and it was given by James M. Early. In early effect, there is a modulation of base width when we vary reverse bias voltage VCB. Here we are considering NPN transistor in which this is emitter, this is base and this is collector. This is junction J1 and this is junction J2. To understand the early effect, we focus on the reverse bias junction. In the reverse bias condition, the width of depletion layer increases. The width of depletion layer increases on the base side more than the collector side because base region is lightly doped as compared to the collector region. Here depletion layer will have the negative and mobile ions on the base side because we are considering NPN transistor and it is P type semiconductor and it will have 
positive immobile ions on collector side because collector is n type material we can see in the diagram the width of the base is represented by wb and the width of the depletion layer which is penetrated in the base region is given by w and the width of the region with no depletion layer is given by w effective we can see that wb is equal to w plus w effective or we can also write w effective equals to wb minus w on increasing the reverse voltage vcb we find that w also increases because penetration of the depletion layer will increase on the base region so now when w increases w effective decreases because we can see in this equation w effective equals to wb minus w so when w increases w effective automatically decreases when the charge carriers emitted from the emitter comes to the base region some of the charge carriers may recombine in this region and in this region only w effective is a region where the recombination takes place we know that the value of w effective depends on the value of output voltage vcb on increasing the output voltage vcb w effective decreases and hence the chances of recombination in this region w effective also decreases since ie depends on the charge carriers which are emitted from the emitter region and reaches to the collector region and here on increasing the vcb the w effective decreases and hence the chances of the recombination also decreases so the charge carriers which are emitted from the emitter of uh, uh, and its chances to recombine in this region will also decrease and so the chances of the electrons or the charge carriers of reaching to the collector region increases and hence the ie also increases here input characteristic curve is shown for the different values of output voltage vcb for vcb equals to 1 volt the curve is this for vcb equals to 5 volt curve is this and for vcb equals to 10 volts curve is this so we get to know that on increasing the vcb that is the output voltage the curve moves this side Accordingly, we can say input characteristic curve provide us the information of input current with respect to input voltage for different values of output voltages. Now we are discussing the output characteristic curve of BJT. This output characteristic curve gives the graphical representation of output current and output voltage for different values of input current. We have already discussed that a transistor can be considered as two diodes connected back to back. and for the output characteristic curve we will only focus on the diode d2 and we know that diode d2 for the output characteristic curve it should be in reversed biased here in this diode d2 the current through this diode is ic and the voltage across this is vcb to obtain a output characteristic curve we keep the input current that is ie constant and we find a relation between ic that is output current and vcb that is output voltage the relation between ic and vcb or the graphical representation which we obtain by by the relation ic and vcb is known as the output characteristic curve and we know that it is nothing but simply the reverse bias characteristic of pn junction diode for the reverse bias pn junction diode ic is equal to alpha times ie plus icbo where icbo is a reverse saturation current ie is emitter current ic is collector current and the icbo is very small as compared to the alpha times ie so we can neglect icbo and write that ic is nearly equal to alpha times ie and also alpha lies between 0.95 to 0.98 which is approximately equal to 1 hence ic can be said nearly equal to ie so output current is affected tremendously by the input current this is the output characteristic curve in which the output voltage vcb is taken in x axis and measured in volts and the output current ic is taken in y axis which is measured in milliamperes and for the different values of ie we obtain a graph like this 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 curve is for ie equals to 0 milliampere this is for 5 milliamperes and so on now if we invert this plot we can find that it is similar to the reverse biased characteristic of pn junction diode
The region below the 0 milliampere of the emitter current is called the cutoff region. In the cutoff region, both the diodes are reverse biased and transistor will remain off. When transistor is operated in this region, we can consider transistor as open switch or logically off. And this is the saturation region. In this, both the diodes are forward biased and here we can consider transistor as closed switch or logically on. This region shows the active mode of operation of BJT. Reverse bias on increasing BCB, there will be a breakdown and current increases rapidly. But this situation never arises because transistor cannot withstand the high power being dissipated. This output characteristic curve gives us the information of output current with respect to the output voltage for the different values of input current. In this video, we have discussed about the input and output characteristic of bipolar junction transistor. I hope this video was helpful to you. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching.